I'm Kakashi with Kanto Capital, and in today's video, we discuss the investment potential of battle styles, what you need to know before you buy any and what I plan to do. Just a quick note, a free way that you can support the channel is just by liking this video, subscribing, and commenting. You know, I'm not here to sell you anything, and I don't expect to build some massive YouTube empire. So your support is a really big help, and it's a great way to keep this channel going. So let's talk about Pokemon's newest release, Battle Styles. It comes out really soon, March 19th, so very, very soon, about a week or so at the time that I record this. And the full card list has come out, so we can finally talk about this set in more detail. Make sure you watch this whole video because this analysis will cover a lot of really important information and numbers that you'll really want to know. And with the information that we know right now about Battle Styles, this is looking like a set that a lot of higher end collectors and investors might actually skip out on. Uh, let me know what you think about Battle Styles and if you plan to buy any. But first, let's talk about the set itself and the debates about the supply. I really think people are going to enjoy opening this set. I don't know if you've looked at the list yet, but the cards have just fantastic artwork. Seriously, it's great artwork, even down to the common cards and the uncommons and the rares. And I think it's really going to make this set enjoyable, whether you're opening, let's say, one pack or an entire booster box. I think it's a really great set for, let's say, a casual collector or someone who's just not as focused so much on prices and value. And it would not surprise me if, let's say, years down the line, if this set creates a lot of great memories and just, you know, build some nostalgia for the set. Uh, because people can't really get their hands on any Pokemon cards during this particular point in the hobby. Now, for investors, this set is really kind of missing those standout high dollar cards that a lot of people look for. Yes, it has some great alternate art cards and full art trainers. Some of my personal favorites are the Houndoom Gold card, the Tyranitar V, and the Empoleon V. Those are the alternate art cards. And of course, we have full art trainers and the Rainbow Rare full art trainers. Now, I absolutely love the alternate art cards, the Tyranitar V alternate art and the Empoleon V alternate art cards. I think those cards look fantastic. And from what I've been seeing and hearing, it looks like a lot of people feel the same way. So it's very likely those will be the key chase cards in battle styles. Now, regarding the full art trainers, keep in mind with the full art trainers that we don't really quite have that price history and the historical demand because people have only very recently begun considering full art trainers to be these higher value, very desirable cards. You know, obviously with the hype around, let's say, uh, Lily and Marnie, for example. And that's a very recent phenomenon. And so if you are bullish on full art trainers, this could be a fantastic opportunity if you really think this is just the beginning. Now, whether that's true or not, you know, only time will tell. I have been hearing some people make the point that if people ignore battle styles, let's say the investors or the higher end collectors, if they ignore battle styles, there might be a shorter supply. And that would obviously have a very positive impact on the price if let's say there's just less battle styles to go around. And I think that's a definitely possible scenario. And it's a very reasonable argument to make. Obviously, if there's less supply, that will affect the prices. Um, I could also make the counterpoint that there's a lot of new collectors, brand new collectors who have just jumped in the hobby who really just want to open anything right now. And I'd even go out on a limb and say there's a lot of pent up demand for those people who really just can't find any product in stores. On top of that, in-person play might actually be coming right around the corner really soon or if not in the foreseeable future. And if players need cards, this will be the newest set with a brand new play mechanic. So that means we have new collectors who really want to open product and then you're going to have players who are going to be needing cards to play and they're going to need them from battle styles in theory i don't know much about the player side but i imagine there will be cards that they will need so while investors can focus on sets let's say like shining fates and vivid voltage or darkness ablaze that might possibly leave battle styles to still be in high demand for the brand new collectors who can't find any product and for the players who needs cards to actually play with. So just because investors and speculators, let's say, won't be going crazy for battle styles, if that's the case, it doesn't mean it's not going to sell or that there won't be any supply. Regular people are still hungry for cards. I'd say they're 
almost starving for cards at this point. And it's just really nice for them to be able to open up product, let's say at reasonable prices or at retail prices. Now, let's say that people are right and there is actually a shorter supply of battle styles. Let's say the demand isn't crazy and as a result, Pokemon ends up printing less battle styles in the long run. Just because there is less supply, that does not guarantee that it will outperform a set like let's say Vivid Voltage or Darkness Ablaze. Supply is only one-sided equation. Yes, it's an incredibly important part, but it's only one side. Now, if we look a little bit longer term, I think the best thing that we could do is look at the numbers and the data. And the best comparisons that I could find in recent memory are sets from the X and Y era. Now, once I break it down, I think you'll see why I make this comparison. The sets we'll be looking at are Primal Clash, Roaring Skies, and Ancient Origins. Now, what makes these sets really interesting to look at is that all three of these sets suffer from massive reprint numbers during the XY era of Pokemon. And if we look at the hobby today, what are we seeing? We're seeing record demand again in the hobby. So the fact that these X and Y era sets were massively overprinted, and then today what do we have? We have record demand. So I think these are solid comparisons because all of these sets have historically much higher print runs than we've really ever seen in Pokemon. Also, these sets share some very interesting similarities. Now, if we look at Primal Clash, what we see is it has a lot of solid chase cards, but nothing that the market really considers to be a high demand, high dollar card that a lot of people desire. It doesn't really have much that can command, let's say, a lot of attention. Let's say, for example, like Champion's Path, which does command a lot of attention just thanks to the Charizard. And Primal Clash booster boxes are going for about $400 right now. Now, if we jump over to Roaring Skies, it's a little bit different. Well, we have our three desirable Rayquaza cards and some mid-tier chase cards, but it's a relatively top-heavy set. So even though it's headlined by a very popular character, it's somewhat top heavy and you're really just looking at those Rayquaza cards as far as opening boxes and trying to pull cards. Now Roaring Skies booster boxes are going for $500. So we have Primal Clash at $400 and Roaring Skies at $500. In some ways I see battle styles comparable to Primal Clash and Roaring Skies because battle styles is kind of looking a little bit top heavy maybe with a small number of very desirable chase cards and not much else that the higher end collectors and investors are going to be looking for now if we look at a set like ancient origins we have five high dollar value chase cards like lugia rayquaza and tyranitar and there's also two shiny full art cards as well so you get a nice variety of pokemon which i think is a very important point to make and also you have shiny cards and more higher end chase cards. Plus I think there's a lot of mid tier chase cards in this set also that makes this a little bit more desirable to open. And the booster boxes for Ancient Origins are $800. And to me, Ancient Origins in a lot of ways, I see it similar to a set like Vivid Voltage, for example. Now, what do we see when looking at these sets? We see Ancient Origins, the stronger set with higher demand chase cards, is double the price of Primal Clash, and it's almost double the price of Roaring Skies. Now, I want to be clear, the return on all of these examples are fantastic. I mean, Roaring Skies is up 500%, you know, uh, Primal Clash is up 400%. Those are spectacular returns, but it's not even close when we break down the numbers. Ancient Origins grew to 800%, comparing to Roaring Skies and Primal Clash. And that's a very big difference. Again, fantastic returns no matter how you look at it, but it's a huge difference comparing the three. And of course, these comparisons will depend a lot on how you view battle styles and whether you think it's a strong set. If you really think it's comparable to, let's say, Primal Clash or Roaring Skies, or maybe you do think it is on the level of a Ancient Origins. But with all of that said, here is the main consideration that I think is the absolute most important thing that you need to think about before you buy any battle styles. And this main reason has nothing to do with battle styles at all, actually. It's that we have these high potential sets that might be coming very soon. Now, I don't know if you remember, but this is the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. So if you have a limited budget, you have to ask yourself, do you want to put money into battle styles? 
and then let's say find out next week or next month that Pokemon is going to release some ridiculous crazy anniversary products and now you have let's say a thousand dollars less to spend because you put it into battle styles the question is will you regret that decision there's sets like EV heroes that's already been announced for Japan I mean can you imagine the potential for a set that is centered around EV and the evolutions you know you have Umbreon Sylveon and Vaporeon and the whole gang there and what about the 25th anniversary what about potential 25th anniversary special limited products looking at these possibilities depending on your situation there is risk in battle styles because of the potential for what is coming later this year so it's not really a knock on battle styles so much as we could see some really crazy winners later this year and of course that's up to speculation maybe you don't think that's going to happen but if you think that's a possibility you have to ask yourself where you want to put your money and will you be able to live with let's say putting money into battle styles if something some something spectacular or even historical comes down later this year and so i like battle styles i think battle styles has really great potential to get solid returns and i think the cards look again fantastic i think it's on another level honestly if you look at the artwork and the cards so i really wouldn't blame anyone for putting money into battle styles some examples that I could see is, for example, let's say some people want maybe want exposure into every set, or maybe you want to collect one of each or two of each booster box or elite trainer box, and maybe that makes sense for your personal plan, as long as your logic makes sense. Or if, let's say, you've had trouble getting any Sword and Shield products, and now maybe this is the first set we can actually get some exposure with battle styles, then I definitely understand that thought process too. Now, for me personally, I believe that I can wait on battle styles. Maybe I'll consider adding, adding it at a later date, or maybe I never get that chance. And if that happens, I can personally live with that. Of course, if you think battle styles is a winner, do what is best for you and your personal situation. Don't let what I'm doing dictate what you're going to do, because we're two different people. We have two different situations, and we have possibly two different investing philosophies. And so while I like battle styles, again, speaking for only me personally, looking at the history and the data of prior sets, and because I believe that there is going to be a lot of potentially amazing sets or amazing products coming around the corner, it is very hard for me to put money into battle styles today. And while I think there are some strong reasons to invest into battle styles, I will be waiting on the sidelines and like I had mentioned before, if I miss out, I miss out and I'm okay with that. So let me know what you plan to do with Battle Styles and what you think about the set. Let me know what you think about my choice. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on that. Let me know in the comments. Liking, subscribing, and commenting really helps out the channel. It really helps support the channel and what we do here. Thank you as always for watching. I'm Kakashi with Kanto Capital. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video.